The southernmost part of the state in the town of Ketchikan, for us it's sort of the end of the line in terms of our service. It's the end of our microwave network that extends from north of Juneau down along the mountaintops to the extreme southeastern portion of the southeast. Uh, Ketchikan is also an interesting site for us in that it's our technician there is a lady, Rhonda Green, who is a multifaceted person. I was born and raised in Ketchikan, Alaska. My dad is Clinkett, my mom is Norwegian. I went to school here, graduated from the local high school. I took off for a few years, went to college in Oregon to become a architect. I, I love to draw, I love everything about art, but came back to Ketchikan and decided uh, being in an office all day long wasn't for me. So job came up here at the local utilities, started as a warehouseman and then got into the local apprenticeship. First and only woman that's ever worked as an apprentice here for the utilities. Uh, pretty proud of that. And then about 11 years ago, Doug Kyle, who used to work here for AT&T, said, hey, we got an opening. Do you want to apply? And I, I jumped at the chance. I'm like, yes. I was ready for a change. And it, it's been one of the best things I've ever done for myself. For Ketchikan, this is actually the main communication center for the whole island. It's not like the lower 48 where you can just shoot a straight line. We have mountains to deal with, great expanse of water to go across. And it's, it's pretty unique here. I fly a lot of float planes, helicopters, to get on and off the island. We have a ferry system. We also have a little ferry that connects us to our airport. So here we are at Rats Mountain. We're at about 2,400 feet. This is probably one of our toughest sites to get to. It has the worst weather. And it usually seems that when we need to get here, it's when the weather's down. So we end up waiting for days and days and then jump on a helicopter, get out here, and try to fix whatever is going on. This site is run by diesel generators 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. Having access to these sites is, is really important, and so helicopters are our lifeline getting here. There's no other way to get in. Uh, in addition to being very skilled and well-respected amongst your peers technician, uh, Rhonda is also a, a gifted artist. I do metal artwork, metal sculptures. I try to use recycled metals, so I end up doing a lot of salvaging at the garbage dump. I like to focus mainly on Alaskan sea life and, and just the nature around us. Uh, the main equipment I use is a plasma cutter, and that is electricity combined with air, and it blasts through metal like nobody's business. Well, I'm also a member of the Ketchikan Arts Council, and every year they have a big fundraiser. It's called the Ketchikan Wearable Art Show. A few of the pieces I have from last year are behind me, and I'm going to have Donna put one on. I made these out of fabric remnants. Sculpture is made of casting material, what, what doctors use for casts. So you heat it up and bend it. So it just started out as kind of like a white mesh square. <laughs> If I were to recommend to anybody wanting to get into the field, I would say go for it. You'll enjoy it. It's it's not, I mean, right now it's a male-dominated field, but it doesn't have to be. We need more women. Let's go.